Hey everybody, Marcos Vegas here with David Lemieux. It's fight week, Canelo versus Chavez Jr., where this man right here will be part of the pay-per-view. Short turnaround, David, and I want to commend you for that because in this day and age, you don't see a lot of fighters doing that. You, you see them fighting maybe once or twice a year, and then that's it, and you're coming off of a short layoff. So talk to me a little bit about that. I'm a, I'm a real deal, you know. Uh, I'm here to fight. Uh, I'm in my peak. I'm in the best years of my life. Uh, uh, after the Curtis fight, I wasn't injured, so when my manager approached me to, uh, to if I wanted to fight on Cinco de Mayo on uh, May 6th, and uh, I said under the Canelo and Chavez, I said, absolutely, I'm healthy, I'm good, I'm ready to go. You know, speaking of that last fight that you had against Curtis Stevens, one of the, uh, I want to say it, it'll probably end up being the KO of the year. It, it was a, a tremendous, well-placed hook that you landed on him. How satisfying was it for you to get that knockout and get that victory, given all the trash talk that he was doing? Uh, well, it was it was it was good for me, bad for him. <laughs> uh, so it, it turned out against him, but uh, it was very satisfying. Some knockouts are a lot more satisfying than others. You know, when uh, when you get a fighter like that, uh, he's gonna remember this uh, for the rest of his life. Uh, it was uh, we worked hard for it, and uh, we we did what we had to do. You know, you coming into this fight and being active and sharp, how do you see it playing out with uh, Dorado Reyes and really the things you've been working in the gym? Oh, we studied him. Uh, we studied him. We underestimate him. Plus, uh, I only took one week off after the Stevens fight, so we're, we're ready. You know, there's no excuse. I'm going to be ready. Uh, I know what I'm going to face. He has no idea what he's going to face. I'm going to destroy him, and he has no idea. So it's going to be a vicious... Uh, vicious uh, display of boxing. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready for 10 rounds. Uh, no matter how tough he is, uh, he's going down. Bro, where does this mean streak come from, man? That, that's one thing I've always liked you about a fighter. Like, you legit want to hurt people when you're in there. Like, where does that come from? It comes from understanding what he what he can do to me and what he wants to do to me yeah. when I go in there. Uh, I gotta put uh, I gotta put food uh, on the table for my kids, you know. Uh, and he's the one uh, in front of me and uh, that's preventing me from doing that. So uh, I'll, I'm gonna take good care of him. And it's always been like that. That's how you've always approached the the fights in boxing. Uh, as that, it's it's you're avoiding putting food on the table and you need to get out of the way and I need to get you out of the way any way possible. The fans, the fans. I'm a fan-friendly fighter. I want to give out also uh, the best show I can always uh, to the fans. You know, uh, I, I love giving a good fight. So, uh, uh, but I also know in my this is my life on the stake right here. Uh, so I, I better, uh, I better be extra aggressive and extra strong and extra in shape, uh, better than anybody. Better uh, every fight. So. Uh, so there's no disappointment on, on my side. I'm at my peak, I'm at my best, there's no excuse. Uh, I can do what I want to do. Eric mentioned at the press conference that you learned a, a lot from the Golovkin fight. And I, I know it always comes up because Golovkin and Canelo are swirling, but I'm kind of curious too, taking that experience and coming into your peak now as well, how have you gotten better from that experience? And, and what have you learned from Golovkin, uh, from a fighter, and then that fight that he had with Jacobs? You know, Golovkin's a particular fighter, uh, we keep bringing that up, uh, but I don't think there's that much to talk about it. You know, he's a good fighter, but I will fight him again uh, eventually and in the near future, and the outcome will be different. I know what I need to do is, is a human being just like everybody else, and he can be beaten, and, you know, I believe I got what it takes to, uh, to do what I got to do. You jumped into that fight. You said yes right away. You see Canelo... Some fans say, hey, you know, they feel that they may be avoiding him or they may be waiting for Golovkin to get older. How do you see that situation? You've seen that you already went in there and fought Golovkin. Well, we see the difference in, uh, in the work ethics. You know, me, I believe to be the best, you got to beat the best. And Golovkin at that time was the guy uh, shining on top. And uh, uh, I wanted to prove myself uh, right after uh, I, got, uh, I got the IBF title. I'm, uh, I want to be the best, so let me be the best. Uh, there's no shortcuts, there's no milking uh, uh, the belt. Uh, let's go, let's do it. And I believe in myself, I believe in my abilities, but the game plan is to be changed, but uh, I still believe in my abilities uh, to beat him and uh, to get back on top. Canelo versus you in September. I've heard people mention that, that, that it's possible. Are you confident? Have you heard anything? Or, or do you have a feeling that it, it could be you getting the shot against Canelo in September? 
I got a feeling, but the, the closest feeling I got is uh, me versus Reyes this weekend, and then we'll talk business uh, after that. All right, David. Hey, man, it's always great seeing you, and great I want to just uh, put that out there. Uh, you're must watch TV and I think uh, that translates when fans see you because of the style and, and how you approach fights. David uh, Lemieux taking on Marcos El Dorado Reyes this Saturday on pay-per-view on Marcos Viegas for Fight Up TV.